Hi, I'd like to do a brief explanation of my working process electric ATV. I started out with a 1994 Yamaha 250 4x4 ATV and quite frankly I got tired of going to my barn to use it and the battery was always dead. And uh, so I thought this would be a good evolutionary project. You may have seen earlier videos of my electric motorcycle and electric snowmobile. So I'm also doing the same thing to the ATV. The battery is half the size, but quite frankly, it's made to just ride around on our property and uh, it'll have a lot more torque compared to the motorcycle or snowmobile, which is really all we need to have for uh, a uh, all-terrain vehicle like this. So with that, I'm going to briefly explain each step of the design process here. First is the battery. It's in an, in a, in an aluminum enclosure that's vented to allow air to circulate through it. It's a 20 or it's an 18S 24P and about five and a half kilowatt hour capacity. So it's about half the size of the motorcycle and snowmobile batteries that you may have seen. I'll post online a detailed explanation of the battery, but for now I'll just give a high level explanation. You'll notice that uh, most of the batteries are, are kind of a bright metal color. Those are actually out of a Tesla Model S battery pack. I took one module that uh, I bought fairly economically because it was uh, a pack that had been partially damaged. So I actually tore it apart, salvaged the individual batteries, and put those to use in this machine. You'll notice there's seven bright green ones down at the lower part of the battery pack. Those are Panasonic uh, 18650s. They're actually the same capacity as the Tesla batteries. And those are the batteries that, are, that I actually use in the motorcycle and snowmobile. The uh, cost of those green ones costs probably around $4.00 maybe a little bit more in, 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 uh, in the current economic situation, where the Tesla batteries, um, probably just a little bit over a dollar a piece. So much more economical, just take some time to, to uh, salvage them. You can see on top is my BMS, and I, I run everything with four gauge wire. On top here is the master switch, and uh, we'll show it maybe on the, on the backside view, but on the underside is a, a switch for the negative side, which I call a range anti-anxiety switch. It allows me to um, completely isolate the battery module uh, by turning this off and the, and the uh, negative switch off. And if I, if I do by any chance run out of power while I'm on the trail, I can circumnavigate the BMS and uh, get me home. You don't want to go a long ways on it, but it, it does allow me to continue running the machine. This is a small electric gauge that allows me to monitor the voltage, current, amp hours, kilowatt hours, even the time of use. I can reset it between charges, which is nice to monitor each, each uh, charge cycle. This is a uh, contactor for the high voltage, one's off 12 volts. I have a um, 150 amp uh, fuse that goes between the contactor and the motor. And the little box over here is the 72 volt down to 12 volt DC to DC converter. With that, I'll have, oh, down at the bottom here is the Controller, it's a Votol, V-O-T-O-L, 150 amp, 72 volt converter that drives the motor. So now let me explain the, the other side of the ATV. I started to explain that in the first part of the video. This is uh, the uh, switch, the range anti-anxiety anti switch that uh, also allows me to completely shut off the battery on the negative side. The motor, it's from QS Motor. It's 3,000 watts. 
It's got a gear reduction ratio of 47 to 19, so a little over three to one. This ratio reduction combined with the ATV reduction gives me almost a 10 to one gear reduction. So uh, definitely geared for a low, low speed, high torque application. And I think with that, uh, I'll explain the actual operation of it in a second. Okay, so let me now actually uh, run the ATV so you can see how it functions. First step is turning on the master switch. Some applications don't have that. They just have a, a, a keyed ignition switch. But again, as you may have seen in my earlier videos, I like to completely isolate the battery. Next step is to turn on the ignition switch. Because I do have uh, voltage going to the, the DC to DC converter, I have 12 volts now to my switch. So I turn on the switch and that provides power to the controller, but also now you can see the, uh, the electric display lit up and gives me the information that I need to monitor my status. It's actually, there's no noise right now, but it's actually ready to go. So I'll just give it a little throttle. maybe a little bit more once I get it on the trail. So that's basically it to go in reverse. I don't have my lights lit, uh, set up yet, but there's a toggle switch for reverse. Put it in reverse. And now it comes backwards. At a, at a lower speed for safety, you want to keep that uh, maybe 20, 30% max of the forward speed. Again, Go forward, just toggle the switch, and away we go.